So we already went through uh, how, uh, what are the different ways of uh, formation of contract of agency. That is something already we went through. So different ways of formation of contract, uh, contract of agency, operation of law, ratification, all those points we already discussed. So I invite your attention to the uh, rights and duties of agency. So these are the slides prepared by our Sri So we will discuss from there as well as we will go through these sections also. Uh, section. So I hope you have the bear. With you, so kindly open your error and see uh, the sections are around you. Uh, right side would be okay. Yes. So, I right said, anyway, we can classify different models will be having different point of view. Uh, uh, with regard to the classification of agents, rights of rights of agents, as well as liabilities of agents. But we will go through the sessions itself how the sessions are uh, indicating the rights and liabilities of agents. So, when we see the rights of agents, we can see that is something uh, starting from. Uh, Two seventeen onwards, section two seventeen onwards, uh, we can say there are the sections regarding uh, uh, rights of the agents, uh, as well as further sections you can see. So uh, sections two seventeen to nineteen, uh, then uh, then in between there are duties also. Again, rights are discussed. Uh, then two twenty one, two twenty two, two twenty three, two twenty four, two twenty five. These are all sections again dealing with the rights of an agent. Again, uh, if you see the uh, duties of the agent, uh, duties of the agent, we can say uh, it is starting from, uh, it, it is not in the continuous order, but we can say section 211, then 212, then 213, 214, 215, uh, then uh, there are other sections also. I will take you through these sections. Uh, how it is important and how uh, what are the uh, principles which we have to learn from um, uh, these sections that we will discuss. So contract of agency, contract of agency that means what we know, uh, who are the parties that we know. So when we say the rights of an agent, of course, as we already discussed, rights of a bailey means that they are the duties of the bailer. Uh, or similarly, rights of a, a, a guarantor or surety. Uh, somehow it will be one of the duties of the debtor. Uh, similarly, they are all related. They are all correlatives. You have already completed your qualification. So you know the jurisprudence behind this. So when we say rights, rights of an agent, of course, they are the duties of the principal. And one more party is there, that is a third party. So how these things will be reflecting before a third party, that is also important. When we discuss contract of agents, so uh, we will see rights of agents now. Uh, similarly, uh, duties of the agents. Uh, in that itself, uh, rights of agents means almost all they are the duties of the principal. Similarly, when we say duties of the agent, that means they are the rights of the principal. And again, one more classification we can take that is before the third parties, before a third person, how this will be reflected, how that will be important before the third person, so that we will see. Right to remuneration, if you see uh, section uh, 290, there is where it is saying, uh, section 290 is where we can see right of remuneration, right to remuneration. Uh, before that, you will just see section 270. Right to remuneration is what uh, we can see in these slides uh, uh, Sri Lakshmi has prepared. Uh, we can see before that section 270, if you see your bear act, you can see how section 217 is given. What is section 217? How section 217 is explaining uh, the rights of the uh, agent. So section 217, if you read. Agents' right of retainer out of sums. So I, I would like to go in the order of the section. That's why I'm asking you to see that. So if you see section 217, uh, you can see the right. Agents' right of retainer out of sums received on principal's account. So principal's account, uh, so agents' right of retainer out of sums received on principal's account. On principal's account, we know 
uh, whatever things agent will be doing uh, that should be in the uh, through the account of the principal or it is account of the principal it doesn't mean to say that it, there should be a bank account for the principal and that bank account should be accessed by the agent uh, it doesn't mean like mean like that here account in the sense it is for you so i am acting for you so that means it is on account of you i'm appointed as an agent of you so that means i can act as and i'm acting as or acting for you so that is that is something we can say as i'm acting on account of you or i'm acting uh, i'm acting and whatever it is receiving that is on account of you that is for you so that's what it is meant to say here so uh, it doesn't mean to say like there should be a bank account and uh, whatever things it is coming to the bank account then how a, a agent can access that bank account and hold it it, it does not mean to say like that and a, a bank account but it is regarding everything whatever things he is doing that is on account of the principal and that principles whatever it is coming whatever it is received on behalf of the principal uh, that is on account of the principal it is not of agent so this is something he can read in section uh, 217 if you say if you see you can see uh, uh, agents right of retainer out of sums received on principal's uh, account uh, so an agent may retain out of any sums received on account of the principal in the business of the agency all monies due to himself in respect of advances made or expenses properly incurred by him in conducting such business and also such remuneration as may be payable to him for acting as an agent so for acting as an agent what all uh, things he may be received he must have received so all money so you can see those words uh, an agent may retain agent may retain agent may retain what out of sums received on account of the principal so as we said on account of the agent he will be receiving something and that is something he has received so i already told you whatever things agent is doing that is on behalf of the principal so he is holding it he is holding it on account of the principal so he is having it so he has the right to retain this so he has the right to retain whatever he has received on the account of the principal all money is due to himself so on account of the principal in the business of the agency all money is due to himself which was due to himself so certain money it was due to him that is something he is entitled to uh, for or on account of that he can retain that in respect of advances made or expenses properly incurred by him so he made certain advances or he had some expenses all these things can be considered as like something uh, our agent is entitled to get and if it is not received then he can retain out of sums received on principal's account he has the right to claim it those expenses i already spent this amount of money i am entitled to get it i i have to get it from you otherwise i will not give you the money this amount uh, it is i am entitled incurred by him in conducting such businesses also and also such remuneration as may be payable to him for acting as an agent so to act as an agent whatever amount of money i have spent that i am entitled to get agent can say that that is what section 217 is so what is important there one is due to himself money is due to himself what on what ground he can retain uh, whatever it is received on account of the principal one is all money is due to him himself all money is due to himself that is advances made one point second point expenses properly incurred he must have made some advances so that he can claim as well as expenses incurred that also he can claim incurred by him in conducting such business and also such remuneration also with regard to such remuneration he can claim section 217 is this if you see section 2 uh, 19 uh, uh, 218 is agent's duty so you can mark it as uh, d and r or however it is however you are marking it in your bearer you can mark it 
to 17 is a right to 18 is a duty of the agent so always you remember that so whenever we say the agent's rights that is the duty of the principal so here agent's duty that is section 280 now to, to, to 290 so see section 290 what is to, uh, section 290 when agent's remuneration becomes due so agent's remuneration becomes due then what are the other things he can do you can see here in the absence of any contract to the contrary payment for the performance of any act is not due to the agent until the completion of such act so whatever things agent is uh, like obliged to perform whatever things it was assigned to him by the principal he has to complete it so section 219 if you see if you read the first part of this section says that he has the obligation to complete his task for whatever task he was assigned for he has to fulfill that task. he has to perform it payment for performance for any act is not due to the agent until he completion of such act once he complete the act then only his uh remuneration will be due until then his remuneration is not due and until then so you are appointed you are appointed as uh, i am appointed as you until i complete the work my remuneration is not due because i have to complete my work but this next step then may I detain money money is received buy him on account of goods sold so if it is a kind of selling arrangement certain money he has received because of selling those goods although the all of the goods consigned to him for sale or otherwise the goods assigned to him to or consigned to him to sell to he was appointed to sell certain goods it was one ton he was assigned to sell it uh, may not have sold and although the all of the goods consigned to him for sale may not have sold or although the sale may not have been actually complete so but an agent may detail so but an agent may detail so first sentence says that uh, payment for the performance of any act is not due to the agent until he complete that act so until he complete he is not entitled that is the first statement but the second statement after the semicolon it says that but he can retain he can detain money is received by him on account of goods sold so he can uh, uh, hold certain amount of money received by him on account of goods sold although the whole of the goods consigned to him for sale may not have been sold or although the sale may not have been may not be actually come so suppose he was uh, entitled to get something uh, he was entitled to get a, a remuneration but that will become due only once he complete that suppose he was given with one ton of uh, a particular product to sell so one ton of coconut was assigned to him consigned to him to sell but he was not able to sell the entire uh, one ton but he was able to sell only half of a ton. Suppose this was a time there was no much demand for the particular property. Suppose it was coconut. Coconut is always having demand, but suppose any other product. So that particular product was not having that much of demand at that point of time. But whether the agent is entitled to get his remuneration. So you can see uh, the basic principles like uh, equity, fairness, good concerns and all. Here also it is applied. So it is trying to say agent is entitled to detain on account of uh, whatever things, whatever money he has received on account of the principal. Even though his remuneration is not complete, his performance is not completed, but his remuneration can be considered as due if he if he has performed certain part of it. That is what section 219 is. Then again, if you see uh, uh, section 220, it says, agent is not entitled 
So that also something you have to read along with section 219. Uh, it says, 219 says he's entitled for the remuneration. The remuneration will be due even though it is not completed. The task is, even though the task is not completed, then also agent's remuneration can be considered as due on what ground I already explained to you. You can read it section 219, the second part of section 290. But if we come to section 220, it says he is not entitled. On what ground he is not entitled? That you can see under section 220. Agent is not entitled to uh, a remuneration for business or on what point of time, on what circumstances we can say that he's not entitled to get the uh, remuneration. Uh, so you can see that uh, on the ground of misconduct, guilty of misconduct. So he is guilty of misconduct. So he suppose he was misappropriating the money. So you can read section 220 uh, later. Uh, you can see that it says, uh, due to misconduct, he is not entitled. So he was acting on behalf of self. There are two illustrations also under section 220. Uh, none of these illustrations you ignore. None of these illustrations you uh, 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 forget to read. Please go through the illustrations and read it carefully because from there you can get questions. As well as, as I already told you, the exceptional cases which is described, uh, which is discussed under the section itself. And when you see section 221, uh, we can see agents lean on principal's property. Another right. We already saw two, three rights. Again, agent's right of lien. You can see on your slide also the right of lien. The right of lien is uh, there for the agent. So uh, when the right of lien will come, so you can see section 220 is dealing with section 2, 219 is uh to a certain extent it is dealing with that and but an agent may detain money is received so um i believe it is retained so an agent may retain the money received by him on account of good soul so that is also a kind of lien uh before that 217 is also saying to to, to retain out of sums received so that is also a kind of lien he is getting a kind of lien uh, a kind of power to hold the properties with him. You can see agents lean on particular property that is under section 221. 221 says agents lean on principal's property in the absence of any contract to the contrary. An agent is entitled to retain goods, papers, and other property, whether movable or immovable, of the principal received by him. So whatever things that is of the principle, it was received by the agent uh, until the amount due to himself for commission, disbursement, services in respect of the same has been paid or accounted for him. So you can see what all things he is entitled under section 221. It says that he is entitled for commission. So we already saw he is entitled for remuneration. So this section saying that he is entitled for commission also. Section 221 says that if he, his commission is due, then he can retain. His disbursement, any other kind of payments, it can be retained. A disbursement and services in respect of the same, which has been paid or accounted for. Him. Same has been paid or accounted for. Him. So if it is not paid or if it is not so until the amount due to himself for commission uh, of commission disbursement the services in respect of the same has been paid so until it is paid or uh, accounted for him so saying that this is of you either it has to be paid or this is something for you you will be receiving it something it is accounted for you until then you will be having the right to lien so these sections when we say the retainer or lien they are all similar concepts we can see section 217 to 18 219 then 221 where agents lien or right to retain. So before it was saying the right to retain the money, here it is saying properties also, goods, papers, and other properties, whether mobile or immobile. So it is uh, widening the aspect. So it is trying to say all those things he has received uh, uh, from the uh, principal, of the principal received by him, or whatever it has received, for the principal, he can retain that. So section 221 is 
uh, the situation which we which we can see here. So regarding this particular lane, there are uh, uh, certain other conditions also. So I would like to invite your attention to Preston G. Vikaji versus Rav G. Javarchand, year 1933 case. This particular case law says that the agent must have lawful possession of the goods. So at what point of time the particular lien can arise, he has lawful possession. The agent is having the lawful possession. He, was, he, he has not misappropriated or he has not uh, uh, dishonestly taken uh, those goods from the principal. He has taken it on lawful possession. This was assigned to the agent by the principal. And second point, there should be no arrangement inconsistent with the exercise of his lien as to the retention of such property. So there should be no arrangement inconsistent with the exercise of his lien. There should be no arrangement inconsistent. So when he uh, uh, exercise the right to lien over that property, so right to lien, you know that you already uh, 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 understood the concept of lien. So now when we when he exercise the right to lien, so when he is trying to hold that property, withhold that property with him, it should not be against any of the uh, contracts which they have already entered. So we can see uh, these sections clearly says one thing. In the absence of a contract, to the contrary. So if there is any contract, they have already agreed. So these all these sections clearly says that in the absence of a contract, to the contrary. So if there is another contract you have entered, and if there is another contract you have agreed, uh, so it, it says this case law says that there should not be a, an inconsistent, there should not be any kind of inconsistency with the contract which you have already entered when you are exercising the right to lead in our particular property. The property should belong to the principal, to the knowledge of the agent. As far as his knowledge, he must know, he, he should be in good faith believing that these are all the goods of, goods of the principal. And it should have been received by the agent in his in his capacity as agent during the course of his honorary duties as an agent. So it was given to him as a part of his honorary duties. That is what he can uh, uh, hold as a right to lean. The agent should be holding the property for and on behalf of his principal and not for on behalf of any non-third person. So it should not be uh, held on behalf of a third person, but should be held in behalf of on behalf of the principal uh, himself so that is what section 221 is what are the other uh, rights of the agent you can see expressly it is given the right to indemnity right to be indemnified uh, so it is the right to be indemnified uh, against consequences of lawful acts then section 222 uh, uh, is also a right of indemnification uh, so he can claim indemnification. Uh, uh, Sri Lakshmi, can you just confirm whether I need to conclude by 6 p.m. or should I continue? Uh, can I continue? Kindly see. Okay. So section 221, uh, then section 222. Uh, hello, Juno. Hello, Juno. You please conclude uh, time, uh, say, 6 o'clock. Okay. okay. Fine. So you can see section... Uh, uh, 221 and uh, sorry 222 and 223 where well, right of indemnification of agent uh, 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 is discussed so right of indemnification you know what does it mean by indemnification indemnification so uh, one party is suffering some kind of loss and uh, you are making good that loss you are saving him from that loss you want to uh, protect him from that loss so that is what indemnification that is something you already learned in the beginning of the specific contract so here we can see section uh, 221, so 222 and 223 are dealing with uh, indemnification. So uh, in short, if we see right to indemnification against consequences of lawful acts. So uh, you can uh, uh, see these sentences. Uh, it is bound uh, to indemnify him against the consequences of lawful acts done by such agent in exercise of the authority conferred upon him. So when he was doing something lawfully, he is entitled to get that indemnification and agent to be indemnified. Second clause that is section 223. So there are all illustrations, kindly go through that. 
223 says agent does they act in good faith so he is doing something on good faith so lawful acts in the sense that there was something he was lawfully assigned to do the second thing it is saying good faith again it is widening it is trying to say in a in a uh, in a, like in a uh, wider point of view it is trying to say again he is doing something on good faith then also he should be protected so right of indemnification of acts done in good faith so uh, and it says that though it causes an injury to the rights of a third person so you can see that that injury in the sense uh, uh, it is affecting uh, a reputation uh, it, it includes the reputation of a third person or a mental or other kinds of injury uh, to a third person some kind of injury is causing to a third person because of that some kind of liability arising upon the agent because of he was acting in good faith you can take a number of situations like that because the principal was not having the proper title or the principal was assigned him to do something and he was doing it in good faith or in a lawful manner he was doing it the agent is doing it but it caused it was causing injury to another person and he is claiming against the agent because he is liable uh, he he was made liable so he wa he uh, wanted to send spend some amount of money uh, uh, to satisfy that third person in such situations is what it is explained here as to indemnify then try to claim compensation right section uh, 225 you see then we can see section 224 says non liability of employer of agent to do and do a criminal act so you keep it uh, uh, apart so it is saying non liability of employer of agent to do a criminal act so where one person employs another to do a criminal act so if it is a criminal act then that indemnification uh, will not come employer will not be liable so that is what section 224 so you have to read that also with the uh, section 222 and 223 uh, if it is a criminal act then the principal will not be liable then you can see section 225 right to claim compensation so right to claim compensation is what uh, section 225 is so it says compensation to agent for injury caused by principal's negligence negligently principal assigns something to him uh, so he must have taken care. So the principal must make compensation to his agent in respect of injury caused to such agent by the principal's neglect or want of skill. So he must have taken that effort to protect his agent, but he didn't do that. And because of that, he is suffering. The agent is suffering some kind of injury. So that injury itself is having wide meaning. So you know that. So you can see that. The, uh, the section is saying like injury so that can be any kind of injury injury to his body or injury to his reputation injury injury to any of this any of these cases it can be considered here so uh, the principal must make compensation to his agent in respect of uh, uh, yeah, injury caused to such agent by the principal's neglect or want of skill i would like to go uh, uh, through the uh, sections that's why i try to explain on the basis of these sections uh, uh, I hope I covered those five points. It is there on the uh, slide, like right to remuneration, right to indemnity, right to compensation, right of retainer, or right of lien. So you can go through this. You read about this. So uh, hopefully we will discuss about the duties of the agent in the uh, coming class. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the different news reported in Hindu which I, I consider it has a constitutional importance. And the second uh, issue reported by this uh, Hindu, uh, which is I think is a constitutional